in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. religious community is a special blessing in the church with its particular mission, spirituality and flavor. Religious communities share so much in common with each other and yet each one has its own unique spirit or charism. All communities are called to manifest the gospel to our church and the world, but the Holy Spirit has led each one to grow in its own unique way in reflecting Jesus' good news. Hand in hand with our outer journey exploring various religious communities will be journey of identifying our own unique spirit. When we find the community we feel specially drawn to, we will have found something of ourselves. We see the spirit of those community members is the same spirit that has been present within us all through our life. At a certain point, we will know there are different when we, through our sense of joy and peace, recognize a kinship and grace with one particular community. The charisms become mainly associated with the lives of especially holy people, saints, and the charisms are regularly seen in the lives of saints throughout centuries. St. John Paul II makes clear that it is very important that this remarkable rediscovery of the charismatic dimension of the church's constitution be responded to with attention and gratitude. He continues to cry out from the Father's house, Today, I would like to cry out to all of you gathered here in St. Peter's Square and to all Christians, open yourselves docilely to the gifts of the Spirit, accept gratefully and obediently the charisms which the Spirit never ceases to bestow on us. He had said. to the Springs of Life, a program on consecrated life. Today we try to understand the charisms of the religious. This program was brought to you by Vatican Radio's English service for Asia. Coming up next, the news. According to Pope Francis, there are two temptations that even good Christians can fall into, namely deifying earthly things and secondly idolizing habits as if they would last forever. Instead, the only eternal beauty to look up to is that of God, the Holy Father said in his homily at Mass Friday morning in the chapel of the Casa Santa Marta residence in the Vatican. Taking his cue from the Mass readings that speak about the heavens extolling God's beauty, the Pope said that the problem with man is that he tends to prostrate himself before that which is only the reflection of God. He underscored the need to look beyond to the transcendent, the principle and author of duty. Talking about the idolatry of habits, the Pope said it makes the heart deaf. He recalled the Gospel where Jesus speaks about the people of the times of Noah and Sodom who were engrossed in daily activities without looking beyond until the day of their destruction. Even habit can be regarded as gods and idols. Instead, beyond the end of created things stands God, as the Church teaches us these days at the end of the liturgical year. There is no sin so great that can exhaust the infinite mercy of God. Pope Francis on Friday had the chance to return to the most favorite of his themes, that of the mercy of God, when he met some 60 scholars of the Romano Guardini Foundation of Berlin, Germany. The group was in Rome to participate in a conference in Rome to mark 130 years of the birth of Guardini, a priest regarded as a leading thinker of the last century, who has influenced both Pope Benedict XVI and also Pope Francis, especially in his encyclical Laudato Si'. 
The Pope called out an episode from the novel The Brothers Karamazov by the noted Russian author and philosopher Fyodor Dotoyevsky that was the subject of the work of Romano Guardini. In the episode, a kind confessor tells a woman who has murdered her sick husband for maltreating her in the past that God pardons everything if the sinner sincerely repents. Pope Francis noted that the woman who thought she was damned forever was transformed at the confessional and received new hope from the merciful priest. The Holy Father said that the wisdom and the power of love of the confessor transformed everything. While expressing alarm over continued armed conflicts and security tensions worldwide that are causing deaths, refugees, destruction, misery, and unspeakable suffering, the Holy See has said that the practical implementation of international humanitarian law is the indispensable minimum against the inhumanity of war and armed conflict. Archbishop Silvano Tomasi, Holy See's permanent representative to the United Nations in Geneva, made the point on Thursday at a meeting of states' parties to conventions on prohibitions or restrictions on the use of certain conventional weapons. He blamed the continuing flouting of international humanitarian law on the globalization of indifference, which he said is evident in collective selfishness and cynical realism, which exclude the weakest and sacrifice human persons on the altar of short-term interests of power. Archbishop Tomasi called on all state and non-state actors to engage to renew a contract for humanity that should benefit millions of people affected by armed conflicts. A leading Vatican official is on a visit to Syria this weekend in a gesture of the Universal Church's closeness with the suffering Christian families in the strife-torn nation. Archbishop Vincenzo Paglia, the president of the Pontifical Council, will meet Christian families in the Syrian